everyone. Thanks for joining us. Uh, we are taking a look at garbing for the expecting or breastfeeding moms. Uh, my name is Kate. I'm an admin at Sewing for Renaissance Festivals on Facebook. Um, and I'm going to bring you through some styles. If anybody has any questions at any point, feel free to either unmute yourself and interrupt me or um, enter your question in the chat. I will read your question out loud so that if anyone is watching this back on YouTube later, they'll be able to know what the question is. They actually won't be able to see the chat. Um, so I'll read your question out loud and I will do my darn best to answer it. Um, just a quick background on me. Um, again, my name is Kate. I have two little ones. I have a four-year-old and an 18-month-old. Um, I did breastfeed um, the 18-month-old at the fair in a corset, among other outfits, and uh, the four-year-old, I could not breastfeed. So if you can't breastfeed or are choosing not to breastfeed, no shame in this uh, group. You're in good company. Um, but wanted to give some options. I know when I was looking for them, it was a challenge to try to figure out what to wear. Um, so I wanted to pull together my research and add a little to it uh, for everybody. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to pull up my PowerPoint. That's uh, right here. Okay. So here we go. I'm going to hide everybody that... Uh, where I won't hide. I was going to attempt to hide everybody that's not showing a picture, but it, it decided not to let me. So there we go. We're just gonna, oh, there we go. Okay, there we go. Now it's just me on the screen in the little awkward corner. Uh, technology is always fun, though I'm glad I have electricity so that we can do this live. Um, so yes, garbing for the expecting or breastfeeding mom. Um, very big on very cool title. So a guide to historical, historically adjacent and fantasy fair wear. Uh, just a few quick notes getting started. Not everybody that I've pictured here is pregnant or breastfeeding. Um, I just pulled the best pictures to explain different style options and they're all to be used at your own discretion as ideas to build a base from. So it's really an idea piece that, uh, that I'm putting together for you so that you can kind of take what you like, take uh, leave what you don't like and mix and match. Um, so I'll go over everything. Uh, not all the designs are historical. Renaissance fairs are not necessarily historically accurate. I do a whole thing on my soapbox about historically accurate and historically adjacent. We don't need to get to it here. Just know that there are some historical examples, some historically adjacent examples, and some fantasy examples in this presentation. I tried to hit on a little of everything. Uh, so whatever your style is at the fair, I tried to hit on that. Um, again, this goal is to the goal is to use these suggestions as a guide. The list is not exhaustive. I'm probably going to be mentioning a few little tweaks you can make uh, to make these garments either more comfortable for um, you or just some other ideas you can do. Some ideas that I've seen actually uh, be used historically that I don't think are the best ideas. Sometimes when men patent things, uh, they haven't really thought about how the woman might be feeling, but they were things patent and theoretically created, um, particularly in a corset section, which I will be going over with their own disclaimers about what not to do um, and what definitely to do. Um, also noting that what works for one person might not work for another. Uh, pregnancy is different for everybody and it can be different from pregnancy to pregnancy. Breastfeeding, the experience is different for everybody. Uh, neither pregnancy or breastfeeding were particularly easy for me. So I definitely never want a presentation like this to seem like, oh, well, it's all natural. Here's what you do and you'll be super comfortable. Um, that's not necessarily what we're here for um, or useful. Um, I will be going through a little bit of my own personal experiences with what I've worn to the fair at the end of this. I know for me personally as a mom, it's been very helpful when other moms have said, this is what I've done and it's worked for me because da 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 da. Um, I, that seeing things online aren't always the same as a mom going, I actually did that. Um, so at the end of the presentation, I'm going to go through that. Um, I also know that. Um, 
pregnancy and breastfeeding are being talked about more uh, in the public sphere, um, but it's still something people are often shy about asking question wise. I don't want you to feel that way um, with me or this presentation. So if you have a question and you wanna interrupt me to ask it, there is no question too personal. And if you somehow hit on one, I will let you know, um, but feel free to ask it of me or I'm very easy to find on Sewing for Renaissance Festival's Facebook page. I'm all over the place. I'm also listed as one of the admins. So feel free to message me privately if that's something you want to discuss. I'm more than happy to discuss it. I'm thankful for the moms who did the same for me when I felt like I couldn't talk about things. Um, so just wanted to put that out there for our group. Um, historical research is also always developing, so something I say today might not be true a year from now, and there's my disclaimer on that. And with that all said, let's look at some pretty pictures, shall we? And if someone says something in the chat, for some reason I'm not seeing the chat, and it's not letting me bring it up, so someone please stop me and interrupt me. Um, so this is a medieval maternity recommendation. What I liked about this is it appears to be showing two pregnant women um, in a circa 1440, 1445 uh, piece. Um, so it's not always easy to find pregnancy pictures that are period, um, pregnancy period pictures. That's fun. Um, but this is a really good example. And we're going to see other examples of similar outfits, but I definitely wanted to include this. Uh, going over just a few quick things, you can see that this is side laced. So you see the spiral lacing up the side. That's probably the best way to do a kirtle for pregnancy um, is to go up along the side so that you can loosen or tighten uh, depending on where you are in your pregnancy. And the lady in red on the right is actually wearing a pretty tight fit kirtle. Looks like she's wearing a very supportive a garment, um, and then she probably has some sort of either kirtle under that or a shift. Um, the only reason I'm not saying it's definitely a shift is because it appears to be a dark color under here, so she might have a second kirtle, and this is really an overdress um, that's just laced pretty tightly. Um, so that that's something to consider, making sure that the sides you can loosen or tighten as much as you want. Uh, this uh, lady is wearing a very loose, uh, flowy type overdress that would have been very popular. Her belt really isn't cinching in her waist at all. It's kind of just sitting on her belly. Um, she does probably have a supportive kirtle underneath. You could see the red and under that would be the shift. Now you hear a lot from me about how cotton, I prefer cotton because I just prefer using it in my sewing. Um, linen is spectacular, um, especially if you're pregnant, because I know I was hot when I was pregnant, and I know I was sweaty when I was pregnant, and linen does a very good job of dealing with both those things. Um, I also know that some women don't like feeling constricted while pregnant. I needed to have upper body support while I was pregnant, so I definitely would have done something closer to the red, while I know a friend of mine would have preferred something closer to the blue. Um, so it's just interesting how that can change. Something else that's interesting to note is it looks like this kind of buttons or attaches here somehow, and if that's actually true, um, then that actually would be able to flap down so you can breastfeed after pregnancy. So that could be a way to convert this outfit to do that as well. And you could always put a tighter belt around your waist if you prefer that. Okay. So hitting on two medieval-ish <laughs> maternity recommendations, and I am going to be saying how they can be used for uh, breastfeeding as well, but I did pull these two specifically for maternity. So the lady on the right, we'll start with her. She is in that gorgeous green color. Her kirtle, she has lace down the front only to about here. So that would be about where your belly was going to start if you were pregnant. So if you want to front lace a kirtle, that's a good way of doing that. And then you have all those gathers in front to flow around your belly. So that's a really good way of doing that. Um, 
So I really like that style. The lady on the left, I think is absolutely brilliant because pregnancy belly bands were wonderful for me. And when I had to like wear them out, it was always kind of sad because you're wearing this nice outfit and then you have this like black, ugly pregnancy belt on and I needed it because it was just very supportive. And if you don't know what that is, it kind of goes, they have a few different ones. They go under the belly, some go over and under the belly and some are just like a little bit of compression to help hold everything together um, as everything stretches, ligaments stretch and uh, muscles get pulled on. Uh, so this lady in yellow managed to figure out how to make a medieval-ish looking belt that would be supportive for her pregnancy belly. So if you want to or have to incorporate something like that in for your own comfort, here's a very good example of how to do that. Um, it does appear that she's wearing a, a loose, I'm going to call it a kirtle. Um, it doesn't appear to be an overdress. That doesn't mean that it's not um, it appears that she's going for a looser fit, so she's probably a um, woman who would prefer a looser outfit that's more comfortable for her, um, but she does have that belly band support on over top of it, which is pulling it a little tighter, but you can see in the fit of the front, it does appear to be a looser fit garment. Um, I saw that and thought it was absolutely brilliant uh, for women who need that extra support while walking around. I wouldn't necessarily breastfeed in that style. It comes up fairly high. It's square neck. It doesn't look like it has stretch. I can't see if you can unlace any of it. So as far as breastfeeding goes, that's not a great option. Obviously, the lady um, on the right in green, very easy uh, just to unlace from the top and breastfeed. Um, I have a really good example for that later in the presentation. Okay. So again, we're going to go over a few things that we already hit on, just pointing out a few differences and a few things that are very useful to think about. Um, the lady um, on the left in the white, that's a very loose overdress with just a belt cinching in. What's nice about that is you can decide how tight or how loose you would like your dress to be, uh, depending on your one mood of the day and two if digestion is doing anything funky to you that particular moment. Um, the other thing I liked is she was wearing short sleeves with a long sleeve tunic underneath. Now I'm going to guess that that's probably a relatively warm fabric, but that would be a guess. But you can put a really lightweight linen long sleeve underwear, under that dress, or you could put like even like a gauzy cotton, something really light. And that would keep it really airy and loose for you, especially the short sleeves. So I wanted to mention that kind of as a short sleeve option that would still look fair. Um, the lady in the middle uh, in green has the most interesting dress on because it's like a v-neck and it's basically like a gathered v-neck, which you see in a lot of maternity like dresses for pictures, at least I did when I was pregnant with my first one, and then I wore the same dress. So I don't know if that's the style now, but um, it comes down like this, and then it just has a belt here, and it's just very loose and flowy. So if that's something you're comfortable with, and if you want to just put a regular bra like under the v-neck, you can go ahead and do that. So that's a really good option for that. Gathering tends to make everything look really nice. Um, I like that you can put the belt as high or low as you want. I doubt that belt is actually attached. I bet it's just added uh, to create some shape. So if you want to go slightly lower, you can do that, or you can be right under the breasts. It's totally up to you what you do with that. She probably is wearing a supportive kirtle underneath that. You can see something poking through the V. Um, she probably is wearing a supportive kirtle laced up the sides, if I had to guess. Um, but honestly, if that's, if you don't want multiple layers, which by all means, like I don't blame you um, for not wanting multiple layers while pregnant, uh, you can just put almost like a tank top to support underneath it. And you could even put your belly band on that tank top and wear an overdress like that to hide it. Uh, so that's a good option um, if that's more your style. 
And I couldn't not include this, even though it's technically a man's garment. This is actually an extant um, hoop blonde. And I don't know if I say that right, but that's how I've always said it. Um, from 1396. Um, so that that is actually an extant garment that they found about what an overdress would look like. So if you want to see some gathers, uh, it's something that's loose fit. You don't even need to wear a belt with it if you don't want to. You can just wear a plain loose fit overdress and just go about your business and enjoy this loose garment. And um, I like that it also has like a little V here. Uh, so that creates a nice shape in the upper body. Um, as far as breastfeeding goes in any one of these outfits, obviously the middle one's super easy. Just pull it to the side, breastfeed, pull it back over. Uh, the one on the left, the loose overdress with the belt, a little harder. You definitely can't pull that type of dress down from the front. It probably won't stretch that far. If you wanted to breastfeed in that, you'd have to pop off the belt, hope that you're wearing short, shorts or leggings or something underneath you don't mind showing and actually hiking it up to here and like breastfeeding. And I actually did something similar, so I'm going to show you that. Um, and then the one on the right, the extant garment, uh, because that V isn't so deep, you would probably have to do something similar. Um, at this point, I'm going to stop. If there's any questions, it doesn't look like there's any questions. And I got my chat bar back. So thank you, technology. I appreciate you. And here we go. Okay. So another option is this type of Florentine Renaissance dress. Uh, the painting you're looking at is Resurrection of the Boy. Um, so we can see that, especially in these two styles, this is just a zoomed in version. This is this square right here. Um, we can see in the zoomed in version, we have another V-neck dress with a, some type of kirtle underneath of it. Um, so this V-neck, is apparently historically accurate. And if I had known that when I was making a dress a while ago, that would have been great. Um, but now you know, and hopefully it will be helpful for you. Uh, it does have a little bit puff on the sleeves. Um, it gives a different style. I'm not entirely sure if these two women are supposed to be representing expecting woman, or if that's just they're trying to show that the dresses are larger from the waist and being held out. Either way, your pregnancy bump will replace uh, any sort of padding that you might need to create that silhouette. Um, though you might need a bump pad depending on your particular body. Okay. Um, Yeah, okay, so I have someone in the chat saying it was just a style choice they liked for that period. Um, yeah, I know, but I wish I had known that they liked that style choice um, when I was trying to figure out what to wear a few years ago. Um, now, again, V-neck, we've already gone over, very easy to breastfeed in. Uh, this lady right here, I would not choose her dress to breastfeed in. Uh, again, it's very fitted across the top. So if you want fitted support um, on your top while you're pregnant, great choice. But for breastfeeding, not the easiest thing to pull down. Uh, it's tight fit, so you can't really pull it up. It's not a choice I would have made um, for breastfeeding. But this dress over here, I would make that choice breastfeeding, uh, especially if it's laced down the front or the kirtle. Or honestly, a lot of times the necklines are so low, it's not that hard just to pull things down and pull them back up. Um, but yeah, so some Florentine dress examples. And then again, Florentine. But what I liked about this one is if you want, you can put a panel right here in the middle and have it attached uh, via, they would have probably pinned, uh, but let's, let's bring this to modern. You can use snaps. Um, and if the baby gets hungry, you just unsnap the one side and breastfeed and then snap it back together. Um, hide it as a jewel on your gown. Uh, so th that's just another option you can use. Again, great for pregnancy. It's higher waist. It goes over the belly. That should be nice and comfortable. 
Um, I would hazard to guess that this is two skirts we're looking at, like an overskirt and an underskirt based on the fact, based on the colors and the way this goes, I could be wrong, um, but that would be my best guess having not seen the show. Um, I would, if I was pregnant, make this into one skirt so that I would be wearing less clothes. <laughs> And um, I also wouldn't want to create a bigger tripping hazard for myself with multiple skirts. That's just a personal opinion, but it's just a gorgeous style and a gorgeous um, option for if you're expecting, or even if you wanna put the snaps or any sort of buttons along here, a quick way to breastfeed and then cover back up. Okay. So here are just some Tudor-esque suggestions. Um, you're going to notice a lot up to here. That's just the most comfortable thing to wear while pregnant um, because it doesn't, it, it sits nicely on the belly. Um, so we have uh, a close up from Bertha Mary over on the left. Again, similar style to the Florentine. Um, you can see that ascension here. There's a little type of V-neck, um, whether that was just a, decor a decorative uh, component that they have. But if you're breastfeeding, add snaps or buttons, open, close, really super easy to deal with. Pregnancy, uh, the draping would look beautiful over the belly. In the center, we have Anne, about 1540, so that's like mid-Tudor period. Um, first of all, gorgeous dress. Second of all, you she's probably really, she's not pregnant in this picture, but this would flow beautifully if you were pregnant. Um, the way the belt sits would be right above the bump. You can actually lower it a little bit depending on where your bump is. I, yeah, I carried pretty high until I dropped, so I definitely would have my belt up here, um, but that gives you a gorgeous tutor option that you may not have considered because she's not pregnant in this picture, but it doesn't mean it can't be converted to something useful for pregnancy. Um, now, this neckline, let's pretend that all the fancy stuff underneath is just jewelry and not any sort of additional drapery that's attached or an undershirt. We're just going to pretend. Super easy to breastfeed in make the back neckline slightly lower than it needs to be. So like here-ish, and then just slide it forward, pop it out, breastfeed, and then pull it back into place. And you have a golden breastfeeding uh, Tudor shirt, uh, Tudor dress. If you look on the right, um, you'll see kind of a late Tudor, early Elizabethan. This was in style for a little while. I wanted to include this because it's a totally different style than a lot of what we see. So she probably is wearing a tighter kirtle or overdress laced up the sides underneath, but then she has this top that goes over this other overdress that just buttons to like here and then flows out. And that would just be very flattering, especially if you're at a fair that it tends to get colder. That's a very good option. I probably wouldn't choose this type of option at a warmer fair. Um, but I know Pennsylvania gets pretty chilly by October, and I would assume that there are some other fairs that can get fairly chilly as well. Um, at least that would be my assumption. Uh, so that's another really good option. Again, you see that she's kind of wearing a belt, but it's not really cinching anything. It's kind of just sitting there. Uh, so that's a really good style if you want to go for a late Tudor, early Elizabethan. Okay. Um, some Elizabethan-esque ideas, you know, just at a huge rough and no one's going to question which, what uh, style you're going for because, wow, roughs. Um, but in the left, we can see that she actually has that centerpiece and it's folded out to go over a belly. So it's almost creased in the middle and then goes over. So that's an option if you want that type of dress. Super easy to breastfeed in. God bless these low necklines. It's curved like that and barely covering anything. All you have to do is slip it slightly um, and you'll be golden to breastfeed in that. 
Um, but this looks like a super comfortable style um, to wear. Uh, the sleeves could be a detachable if you get too hot at the fair, just have like a nice different sleeve or just do a lighter material. We are in a different environment than these ladies would have been in. Um, and we are in a different time period with different materials and different makes. So sometimes we just need to adjust what we're doing for our own comfort. And that might be a case of that. Uh, the lady on the right almost has like a peplum <laughs> dress. So if I had to guess how her, this dress was constructed, obviously she's wearing um, some type of shift underneath. Um, but I would hazard to guess that she is wearing a kirtle laced up the sides to support everything um, and make everything look smooth and lovely. And then I would guess that she's wearing something over that that has the peplum attached. I don't know what name to give that except peplum because that's what it reminds me of. Um, it could all be one skirt and they just kind of tucked it up and created that fold. Um, I like to imagine it as a peplum. Um, and then I would guess that the sleeves are tied on. Uh, that would be my guess anyway. Uh, in any case, that would be something pretty comfortable to wear and something pretty different that could still be historically um, adjacent to wear. So that could be something that's just different if you want to go slightly different at the fair. Um, and again, the bigger you can make a rough, the better, depending on where you are <laughs> in Elizabethan era. Okay, so we all know that our go-to looks for maternity tend to be Regency, at least mine were. Here's two examples. Again, same thing with breastfeeding. Put a tie here, untie it, breastfeed. Um, but pregnancy-wise, they're flowy. They're light material generally, at least that's how they look. Um, I did this style with my, with my second pregnancy. Um, you'll see a picture of that later. Uh, it's just a good go-to for something that's light and airy and still looks period and is fun uh, that you can put a tie in the back instead of making this any sort of clip or zipper, have this tie and you can just loosen or tighten the top or the bottom as you go through your pregnancy. That's a super easy way of doing that. Okay, some Celtic inspired wear. Uh, just hitting on these. This is a doll just not just some lady in really like weird looking makeup. Uh, this is actually a doll. Uh, we have a V-neck. I really liked this band because you can make it as big or as small as you want. And I really liked this crisscross design right here because that would just be very a very flattering line. There's enough material that it should drape nicely over a pregnancy bump. If we look over here, this would definitely be a more modern style um, to wear. It does appear to be a short dress. Um, if you really wanted to wear it as a pregnancy dress, you would probably want to raise the waistline up a little bit. Um, but what I liked is this almost great kilt feel over the shoulder. Um, you could always make this detachable and then you can just use it as a breastfeeding drape for modesty, if that's something that you would like to do. Um, if you would like to be a little bit more modest, this gives you a way to incorporate your outfit at the fair instead of pulling out something that clearly doesn't match anything you're wearing. Uh, it just gives you a nice drape option. Uh, okay. I'm just checking when you see me scrolling up, I'm checking to see if there's anything I missed on the chat. Uh, this on the bottom, I think that this is just a bodice piece. I don't think that it's a boned corset or anything. Um, so just with that disclaimer, oh, and I clicked. With that disclaimer, uh, that's here. But something else I liked when I looked at this, I saw pants. Um, I often wanted to wear pants when I was pregnant. And, you know, sometimes there's weird things that happen when we're pregnant. Um, that make us want to wear pants and regular underwear and things like that. So um, 
this could actually be a good type of outfit to wear if you want to do like secret pants. If anyone follows like Rachel Maxey, um, I think Bernadette Banner did um, a Victorian or Edwardian version of secret pants. And I'm pretty sure Morgan Donner just did like a punk version of secret pants. Um, but uh, Rachel Maxey's secret pants, I can totally see with this. So if like a pantsuit or even separate is something you want to go for, this kind of looks like a good option. This, I would not wear this breastfeeding. Um, too many things for baby to get poked on, scratched on. Um, but if you want to wear it pregnancy wise, if you just raise this to under, right above the, the belly area, wherever that might fall for you, uh, this could be a really like, cool option, or you can raise it, or you can put a line above the belly and below the belly and have it like tight fit around the belly. Um, and if you wanted to expand these strap things to go around the belly, then that gives you another option for a pregnancy belt looking thing that might um, add some extra support for you. So there's lots of options with a dress like this um, for the pregnant woman, again, I would not choose this style for breastfeeding. Um, the lady on the right, if you, layers are your thing and you just want to keep layering um, as a pregnant woman, this is a good option. Or as a breastfeeding thing, again, it can be used as a modesty cloak if you're breastfeeding. So a really good option to pull from um, and to figure out. Okay hitting on our fantasy inspired looks. We have cottage core all the way on the left. Again, I, great for breastfeeding, V-necks. Um, but also if you make it out of the right material, that'd be super light, super flowy, super comfortable for the fair. Uh, you can choose to um, not have it go as long as I think this lady has it going uh, to avoid being a tripping hazard. Um, in, if you're actually walking around a fair versus sitting and taking pretty pictures, um, I definitely will take my pretty pictures with things longer and then hem it up for the fair. Um, but this is a really nice like flowy cottage core type option. Uh, the lady in pink and white, I just think that that's gorgeous. Um, if you're going to breastfeed in it, maybe don't have all the jewelry, just lots of things for baby to get scratched on and or baby to grab and pull and possibly rip your dress. So maybe make it um, out of all cloth instead of the jewelry um, for breastfeeding. But if I had to hazard to guess, that skirt kind of comes across, and you can't see me, comes across here. And if that's the case, you can kind of just like lift up breastfeed and close again. Uh, so that's really nice. Again, stops kind of above the belly. So a good style uh, for pregnancy wear. Uh, this lady in the middle, um, this little elf that I have going on, I purposefully chose this outfit because it has that middle belt. And the reason I chose that middle belt is because some women after having a baby uh, prefer some sort of compression on their belly, um, kind of feels better for some women. Um, I liked it some days and didn't like it other days. I was a C-section. Sometimes some compression helped make everything feel like it was still more attached than it probably was. Um, but if you're wearing a type of belly band as recommended by your doctor, make sure it's a recommended thing by your doctor. Um, that's a good way of kind of hiding that and incorporating it into your outfit a little bit. Um, breastfeeding, just roll the thing down and breastfeed. You can even put like a breastfeeding our nursing top underneath and like unclick it. And that could be that kind of tank top thing that she's wearing. Um, not the best style for if you're pregnant, but um, some women do wear some type of compression support. Um, it's not for reduction, it's for support. Uh, that could also be used for something like that. Again, talk to your doctor. Uh, the flowy kind of fairy dress, Layers are your friends. So if you want to get a bunch of lightweight natural fabrics and create kind of a fairy dress, that would look great while pregnant. V-neck, super easy while breastfeeding. Um, so that would just be a very light and airy option. Add fairy wings and you can be a fairy. 
um, add a little crown if you don't want the full fairy wings and you kind of have like a fantasy forest nymph princess queen. Uh, so there's lots of good options um, just with that. And with the tie, you can tighten or loosen that depending on how you're feeling at that particular moment. Uh, this lady all the way on the right is from a TV show I didn't watch, so I can't tell you much about it, except that the dress is gorgeous. Um, I don't think it's historically accurate at all, but I'm sure I, that could be proven wrong. But these are fantasy looks. Why would we even care about historical accuracy with fantasy looks? Um, this is all ruched in here, and I think there's multiple layers of ruching to create this really gorgeous front that just flows over her belly. Um, she is wearing a tighter sleeve. Uh, if it was me making this dress, I would probably want a huge sleeve, almost like an elf, um, like Lord of the Rings elf type huge sleeve um, added to that for a complete fantasy look. Um, it does look like she's wearing some type of velvet or stretch velvet. Um, so if you're in a warmer area, maybe not the velvet, uh, but this is just a gorgeous option for if you're pregnant. I just think it flows so beautifully over the body. Okay, do I have any questions to this point? No, okay, then we'll keep going along. Okay. Maternity corsetry. Important. The primary purpose of a corset was for support, not waste reduction. Do not try to reduce your waist during pregnancy. I'm going to say it again. Do not try to reduce your waist during pregnancy. Um, the two examples on the outer edges, the left and the right, are extant examples. Um, of corsetry in the Victorian era, and then the center one is actually an 18th century stay reproduction. Um, she's a really, there's a really good blog to go to if you kind of want to see uh, how she put this together. Um, so the, all the examples have a lot of different ways to lace um, up areas because you want to be able to loosen as the belly gets bigger. Uh, think of this as kind of like a Victorian, the two outer ones, the Victorian way of having a belly band. This is just all about support, not about hiding the belly really, not about reducing the belly. It's all about supporting the bust, supporting the back, supporting the muscles. Um, so I did not wear a maternity corset while I was pregnant. Um, I wasn't comfortable with the idea of that much compression around my midsection. I was a, I need to have a bra, like keeping everything in place and then flowy over the belly type person. So um, I definitely liked a tighter fit on top, but once I got to my belly, I wanted flowy. So I cannot attest to how this would feel but women wore it for generations. Um, now, we want to, if we want to stay AJ or AJD, um, they would have worn a kirtle through uh, medieval Tudor Elizabethan uh, stays following that. So that would be more your center. Those stay styles did, stay styles did change. Um, big on alliteration, um, apparently, today. Um, and then, these again are Victorian era corsets. Um, I have a chat. What about Regency short stays? Would that be better for no compression? Uh, yes, because of where they end. Um, I would be a little concerned that they would end basically like on the start of the belly. Um, so I would be afraid of them trying to roll up despite the boning. Um, I'm not entirely sure what they did in that era um, for stays, um, but you figure Regencies would end here, and I know my belly started like here. <laughs> so you have to really take your body into consideration um, with that type of thing. Compression isn't the problem. Again, speaking to your doctor, I'm not a medical professional, but compression isn't the problem. You just don't want to like reduce and do too much. Um, even belly bands compress to try to hold you up. Uh, so 
I would just talk to your doctor if there's any concerns along with bringing them like pictures because as soon as you say you want to wear a corset they're probably going to think of like Kim Kardashian um so make sure you kind of show them what you're talking about um so that long answer <laughs> compressed uh, it depends on your body. I wouldn't have been able to wear Regency short stays with my pregnancy, but I have a friend who carried super low that could have, without any sort of problem, worn Regency stays, and it probably wouldn't have even touched her baby bump. Um, does that kind of answer the question a little bit? You can give me a yes or no in chat or a follow-up. Yeah, okay. No problem. Okay. There we go. Okay, breastfeeding and curdles or overdresses. So we're going to discuss the picture on the left and then I have a really nice close up of the picture on the right. So the picture on the left is from a uh, book that is somewhere circa 1400 to 1500. Um, it's a picture of Mary feeding Jesus. She's actually breastfeeding him. So we get a very clear view on what her dress is, like kudos to the artist that put this together. Um, so we can see the spiral lacing. And if you can look very closely along here, I'm assuming you can see my mouse. Can someone confirm that you can see where my mouse is? Um, okay, good. Thank you. Um, there's a good seven or eight grommet holes that are unlaced for this. Um, so this is where this would have gone. So this is completely unlaced um, down seven or eight holes. These would have been hand stitched holes, um, but they're still grommet holes. And then she is wearing a shift underneath, which is getting pulled down. So this is a historical way that they breastfed um, because I doubt the man who drew this <laughs> came up with this idea all by himself. He had to have seen it somewhere or it had to have been common knowledge. Uh, so this is just a beautiful depiction and there's so few of them out there um, that I've seen or been able to find that are like historical renditions of women breastfeeding or in this particular area of life, um, actually participating in this area of life. Um, so I can try to pronounce the name of the book but you can see it written here. It's the Grand Hur de Rohan. Um, again, dated circa 1401 to 1500. This is page 33. If you search that name, you can actually find it in some archival sites. Um, I can't read any of it, um, but this is just a gorgeous picture. It's on page 33 of that book. Um, at least it was on page 33 of the archive version I was looking at because like, there's no page numbers. Um, we're going to take a closer look at this full picture on the next page, but you can kind of see where we're going with it. There we go. So if we look right here, we can see she has buttons. You undo those buttons, it's almost like a modern day maternity, uh, excuse me, modern day breastfeeding shirt where it will open and fold down. And then you have easy access for breastfeeding. So here's another historical look at something that would have been worn and that you could wear breastfeeding. And we can at least make an assumption here since she's holding a child that if this is her child and she looks to be in an age where this probably is her child or she has one of similar age, this is something that they had. So if you put two buttons here, you fold down and then you just pull down the shift with it. So another historical example, again, you can see the up close. I might be in the way, hang on. You can see the up close of the buttons. You can undo one or you can undo both depending on your comfort level. You might wanna bring this a little lower depending on your comfort level and your ease of breastfeeding. That's a personal choice. Um, but here are some really good options um, for breastfeeding up close and a historical look at it. Okay, so breastfeeding in a corset. Do not waste reduce without talking to your doctor. Pregnancy and birth can and are traumatic to your body and it does take time to recover. As I said, some people do add compression because it makes them feel better, but always talk to your doctor about any of that before doing something like this. Um, 
Also, you want to be careful too much compression, compression on the actual breast can lead to clogged ducts um, and worse. I've had clogged ducts. They were not fun. I, it, I would recommend doing much to avoid them. Um, I had them twice. Uh, it was not fun. So over on the left, we have Rosie from Lord of the Rings wearing this beautiful, we'll call it a corset. You bone it enough, it would be a corset. It's probably just a bodice piece, but style-wise, we can turn it into a corset, which is why I included it in this section. I would probably bring the circle down to be more of an oval so that when you opened it, you have more space. But if you put a tie right there, just untie and open the side you need, uh, that would be very easy to breastfeed in. Um, next picture is actually a patent from um, the Victorian era from 1886. Uh, this was submitted um, to the patent office. We have records of it. Uh, you can see that they have this flap that opens and they actually have like two buttons on each side that the flap would then close to. Um, so this is something that would have been worn historically, again, in the Victorian era. And I know that most of our fairs um, take place in either Tudor or Elizabethan. Sometimes you get some other random fairs. But in fair wear, we do tend to like to wear our corsets on the outside with very cool fabric. So the reason I'm showing you these Victorian era corsets is because you can do the same thing even if you're breastfeeding. You can wear these on the outside. It's perfectly appropriate fair wear. And then you have easy access to breastfeed. Something I do want to note is in our modern day interpretations of clothes, this if it fell where we were thinking modern day clothes go, this would go like right here. So like we'd be missing the nipple, but Victorian era corsets really were like to here. So it would fall like this. So that's really, it really is much lower than you would think. And the only reason I know that is because that's the era of corset I tend to make when I'm making my corsets for the fair. Um, I use a truly Victorian pattern. I did three mock-ups of it and actually raised the neckline to where I like it. Um, but I, that's how I base, I love the shape it gives me. So that's where I pull my corset patterns from, um, when I want to wear them on the outside of my clothes or even underneath, I do wear them as supportive garments every once in a while, um, even in my day-to-day -day life. Uh, so that's a good option. Another good option is of course the underbust corset. And then you wear a nursing bra and you have a tie right here and you untie it and unclip the nursing bra and you feed and you close. You don't even have to touch your corset. Some of them go from here down like that. Um, historical, not really, but again, fair wear. Um, completely fair to wear this. Uh, this is a design by Pearson's Renaissance Shop. It was just too gorgeous not to choose. Um, I have not shopped from them personally, but gorgeous design uh, with their corset right there. Uh, next, we have another Victorian era uh, nursing corset. And the reason we have so many of these is we have actual extant garments and we have patents. Um, what's nice about this particular pattern, um, aside from some of the features, which I'm going to briefly talk about, they actually, someone on Etsy reproduced a pattern of this corset and it's available for purchase on Etsy if you'd like to sew this yourself. Um, sew a replica, it does only come in one size because it's replica, so you would need to be comfortable sizing up or sizing down the corset, but it would be a great base to start with. Um, I included the Etsy shop that you can buy it from there. Um, but what's nice about this corset is it has kind of this like under flap and then the button, there's only the two buttons right here and it's attached on almost a decorative lace piece. So you just unclip the lace and open it um, and then you would pull the flap to the side. I like the flap idea because one, I can wear it slightly more comfortably. Um, I don't like the thought of something um, as stiff as a corset over that area without something else protecting it a little bit, like the cutouts right here. I just imagine that digging in slightly. It's not my favorite uh, design, um, but I do like having that piece of, it's probably cotille going across and then crossing back over. It just adds a little support and protection for a very sensitive area, especially during breastfeeding time. Um, so I really liked this design. 
Um, and I think that it's very interesting. I like the bus goes all the way up. That's a lot of like good shaping and support. So that's a really good corset design uh, to look to. Uh, there are other patent cor corset designs. Um, I have two more examples of corset designs on the next page, but I just wanna hit on some that I didn't include. Someone did patent a design where the corset just had two cutouts right here. <laughs> Not that big. Um, not my favorite. I, I cannot imagine that being comfortable because you have to figure it's bound in that circle. So that's a lot of like fabric just on there. And even with a chemise underneath, I just imagine that like pushing. And I just, it's not for me, but if you search you, for um, nursing corset, you could probably find that patent pretty easily if you wanna look at it. Um, so that's a design. There's a lot more of these types of designs with varying amounts of buttons, various amounts of boning going along this top area, no boning going around the top area. There's one corset I saw at one point that had buttons down the front and then like no boning at all here and just like a flap that basically gets ruched across. So it really depends on what you want to do um, with this type of corsetry. Okay, same disclaimer applies. Talk to your doctor. Don't compressed too tightly. I think we've beaten that enough. Okay, so what I like about this design, this is gorgeous. They created the design to go around the lacing, which is over the breast. Um, I think this is an absolutely gorgeous design. Um, I would wear this. I, if I would probably now, even though I'm not nursing, I would lace down this whole side and still wear it if I laced it further than just the breast area and then continue this type of design down. I find it absolutely gorgeous. What I don't like, and um, by the way, this is an extant example um, from 1820 to 1830 that's in the Met Museum. Uh, it's not on display, but it is available for viewing on the Met Museum website. Um, whoever made this corset apparently only thinks you need to nurse on one side. Uh, they did not <laughs> include the same type of panel on the other side. Um, I know I needed to alternate. Everyone I know needed to alternate. Um, otherwise, your one side was going to be very unhappy with you. Uh, so I just wish that this person had designed this corset to, to um, go on both sides. So there's that. Uh, this corset, kind of similar to the other ones, except uh, instead of opening to the side, it opens down. Uh, that's a good option. I wouldn't choose. Oh, I wouldn't choose that version if you're going to wear it on the outside, just because I don't find it as pretty looking. Um, but you do uh, you and what you like. Everyone's fashions are different. I mean, what one person, somebody could find this one that they don't like it, and I love that. Um, so I just wouldn't personally choose that one, though the design itself is really good. And something else to note is the website I have underneath that, um, yesterday's thimble.com, uh, they put up the article about this. It does say that it originally appeared on Foundations Revealed. Um, they gave them the credit for that. Um, but it does have a whole discussion on different types of nursing corsets, um, from, the Victorian era. So that's a very good website to go to, to get some inspiration, to get some pictures, um, just as a resource. Okay, so we're gonna hit on a little bit of my personal experience. Um, for Halloween last year, we all went to the fair and various Star Wars characters. Um, so I was Princess Leia and my son who was breastfeeding at the time was an Ewok. Um, I did breastfeed in this outfit. It really is only cinched in here and is a fully flowing over dress. Um, I wore leggings because it was cold. Otherwise, I would have worn like shorts underneath of it. But I basically hiked it up to here and then used the dress as my modesty cover. I was just somebody who personally tried to have a modesty cover. And if it didn't work, it didn't work. But I tried. Um, so I had no problems breastfeeding uh, in this huge overdress that you would think would be a problem, but uh, I had no problems breastfeeding in that. I also breastfed in this corset. This is a truly Victorian pattern that I altered to breastfeed in, so I stopped the busk early and then laced up uh, the rest of the top. 
I would just unlace it almost like you saw that picture of um, Mary feeding Jesus, unlace it and pull things down and feed. Um, so I actually fed him in this corset several times. Uh, I did a Regency era uh, look while I was pregnant with him. Uh, that was very comfortable. I had ties across here and ties across here and that I would just tighten or loosen depending on the day. The sleeves did go up here and sit nicely, but I decided to have fun, I guess, uh, with this. So I um, took them off to the side uh, just for the pictures, um, but I had, that was a very comfortable thing to wear. Um, I did wear a big flowy overdress at one point while pregnant. Um, I did not carry that pregnancy to term, so I didn't want to include a picture of that just for my own personal sake, but I did walk the fair in that um, huge overgown, so um, that is something to be very comfortable worn, and I did also at one point cinch a belt in right under here for it, so I've done both those styles. I like both those styles. Um, so I, I've worn the gamut. <laughs> I've worn a kirtle and breastfed in that. If you've seen, I have a heraldic kirtle um, inspired by Morgan Donner uh, that's laced all the way down. I just unlaced from the top and opened the feed. Um, really, uh, some modern clothes are a lot harder to breastfeed in than like these clothes, uh, just because they're not made for you. <laughs> um, I, again, when I was pregnant, I didn't want anything like super tight. This kind of sums it up pretty well. I liked a tighter fit on top and then loose and flowy over the bump. That was my personal preference. I did wear a pregnancy um, belt a bunch. Um, so yeah, uh, that's really what I did. And I never tight laced the top of my corset so that it was super tight because again, clogged ducts, not fun. Um, so yeah, that is this presentation. I hope that was useful. I'm going to click out of my PowerPoint. I am maybe going to click out of my PowerPoint. There we go. Okay. Uh, if there's any questions, feel free to unmute yourself and ask or ask in the chat. Uh, we will go from there. So opening it to questions. That was a lot in an hour. <laughs> okay. I'm sorry. I'm Sorry, can you hear me? I can hear you. Uh, I'm not a mother, so I'm just kind of taking this from a sewing perspective, mm -hmm. to kind of get a better understanding myself okay. of the difficulties. Um, and again, I apologize if this sound too personal. No, no, I will tell you if it's too personal. It's probably, <laughs> you're fine. I know my friend, when she had kids, she complained about leaking a lot. Yes. Well, how often was that a concern for you? And like, what were the ways that combated or how'd you work with that? Um, so leaking from everywhere happens while pregnant and breastfeeding. Um, so that's one of the reasons I brought in the pants discussion. Um, it's actually very common to have like some urine leakage even uh, at like 30 weeks beyond. Um, so for me, that was a, you would have to wear like some sort of pad. So I definitely wore like modern underwear, um, no matter where I was going and then like a liner. So I would just make a dress that allowed for that. You also have like a bunch of weird vaginal fluids that happen while you're pregnant. That happens the whole duration. Uh, so I wouldn't go completely historical with undergarments because of that. Um, are you asking breastfeeding wise as well? Because then you have leakage there. Yeah, I was thinking yeah. more about the upper leakage. Yeah, but yeah. Well, there, there's just leakage everywhere. everywhere. There's everywhere leakage when you're expecting our pregnant. Um, like, yeah, we're kind of there already. But like, we have a solution for that. Yeah, of. yeah. Um, I actually bought bamboo pads that are rewashable. Um, and I, they're very comfortable. I actually sometimes just sew them into outfits to add extra padding. Um, but I would create almost like a little pouch up here, depending on what they're wearing, that they can insert like a bamboo pad or they have disposable as well. I find the disposable really just didn't sit well with my skin. It just irritated it and you don't need any irritation. The bamboo is really soft. Um, so that 
finding some way to add like a pouch for them to slip in something and then maybe like a linen pouch for that so that you can kind of make that work and linen would kind of wick it away and not have it kind of go to the outside and just um and then they would have the pouch for any over leakage did that answer that your question on that yeah it's giving me some ideas <laughs> Um, yeah, I, or you can just sew the bamboo pads right in if you're making the whole thing washable, um, that can be an option, uh, but I like that the bamboo pads, you can just throw them in the washing machine, so, and I got them off Amazon. <laughs> what about, like, um, detachable pads? So, like, you have the, the different layers, and then you have something you could, like, clip in there that would go kind of like around or underneath to the top of the breast that could be taken out and washed? Yeah, that would work. You just want whatever you're using to be washable um, because bacteria. Um, so you just, whatever you're making, you want it to be fully washable. But yeah, if you wanna like wrap something around to go underneath, that would have something that can go in and out, that would work. maybe have a special pouch that, because you change them throughout the day, even when they're reusable. Um, disposable, you throw away and put in a new one, but reusable, you don't often have many places to put it. So almost like a historically accurate pouch that they can just put on the side. And when they go to the bathroom, if they changed anything, they can kind of just like leave them in there or attach them. I couldn't go anywhere without a stroller. So I just would throw like the bag in the bottom of my stroller. But um you that could also be an idea um to sew like just have like a little bag that would be able to contain all that or even just a little bag to have extras well the awesome thing about historic skirts at the very least are the massive size pockets you can hide yeah like i think i i myself i hid enough to like put like six seven frozen water bottles in the <laughs> so you know there's always that it depends on the age of your kids, whether those pockets are truly useful or not. Um, because my son, when he was breastfeeding and I breastfed him through a year, when he was closer to a year, he would kick and his foot would have went into one of those pockets and he would have been yanking on it. <laughs> so you have to take that into consideration. Some people breastfeed up until they're two or even older than that, then you're running after the kids. You can't be weighed down with water bottles in your pocket. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, to be fair, I put mine as frozen water bottles for cooling. So yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> no, I know what you meant. It's just things you don't think about until you're chasing the toddler through the Renaissance Festival because they heard a song they thought they liked. <laughs> That's cute. Um, yeah. I'm sorry. Cute. I'm just, in theory, cute. it's cute. It was cute. He, she, saw, she saw the queen. She went running. Aww. And then she got scared of the queen and she ran the other way. <laughs> so, yes, um, whatever you're making for somebody with a child, make sure it's running safe. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, I was always thinking about bending safe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> running safe. Yeah, yeah. Well, it depends on how mobile the child is. Uh, because again, I stopped breastfeeding at a year. He was crawling, but he wasn't running anywhere. <laughs> um, but I know friends who breastfed until they were two and they would like pop off and the mom is trying to tuck everything in and the kid's taken off because he oh. jumps down and you go to grab them and you're like trying to make sure you're not losing anything. So just things to consider. Yeah. <laughs> they make life so interesting. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm not saying currently for anybody pregnant and just kind of trying to better my understanding mm -hmm. of the struggles. <laughs> Yeah, and it's different for every woman. So it's hard to say definitely do this or definitely do that. I didn't have yeah. a ton of leak leakage up top, um, probably because my son decided that feeding every hour was a good idea. So there was never time to have leakage. <laughs> um, but even when you're feeding, like there's leakage while you're feeding because they're like drooling. <laughs> So mm. you need to, if you can almost create like a safety thing to go over that area of the dress, like sometimes I wouldn't even have the guard just to like guard modesty. It would be like a guard to try to protect whatever I was wearing from whatever drool was happening underneath me. Um, mm. So even if it had like an additional flap that was 
sewn in or available that you can kind of clip out and then just wash that and clip a new one in almost like an additional linen piece that would probably be useful because kind of like a detached lining yeah yeah That's interesting okay Sorry, I'm like, I'm kind of picture like, how to sew this, how to make that shape. No, you're good, you're good. And I, if I'm looking down, it's because I'm listening. Um, so mm. yeah, you're, you're good. Um, yeah, it, it's, motherhood is interesting and it's different for everybody. So there's no like one set of this would be a good idea or that would be a good idea. Um, so, but for me, those were my struggles. Some, I mean, I have a friend who had lots of leakage because her child decided that they wanted to sleep a lot. Um, and so right away, pretty much was giving her three hours, four hours. So in that time you have leakage. Um, so that mother would need a different set of requirements than someone like me who really just needed quick access because he wanted to feed every hour. Yeah, and the place was like, like to store the the like uh, pump bottles or whatever would have been better for her. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So if you want to build something that people can pump, they have wearable pumps now. So you can actually, if you want to think about the mom who's pumping and walking, because some moms pump the breast milk and feed them even if they're home. They don't want to breastfeed breastfeed, but they want them to have the breast milk. So they'll actually like wear pumps where they work during the week and don't want them to get used to breastfeeding that they still mm. pump on the weekends and feed. Well, those moms are walking around the fair trying to figure out where they can hook up to their machine, well, now it's wearable. You can actually go watch a show and no one knows you're pumping because the show's so loud and they're hidden. So that maybe adding some sort of ruffle that- Yeah, that, that, that Venetian there. style would probably be, or the, sorry, the Florentine style would yeah. probably be the best for that where you've got the over, I think it's the gum. Yeah, there. and if it clips here, you can just unclip it in the bathroom, put on your, and then clip back up. Um, so that would be a good style for that, um, for moms who are, are pumping and, bottle feeding, um, but pumping so that they can bottle feed breast milk, especially now with the formula shortage. I'm mm. sure a lot of moms are doing that. I have no idea how, how I would have survived with my daughter because there was one type of formula she can have. And Did a goat? Uh, no, <laughs> no. She was on Infamil sensitive. Mm. Um, she refused to drink soy. Um, and the other ones gave her such bad um <laughs> baby justin yeah <laughs> that she couldn't stay on them so yeah and she didn't she wouldn't drink the other brands because my daughter is definitely my daughter she's picky and stubborn um even at like two months old um mm. So I feel for those moms, but a lot of moms who thought, oh, well, I'll just get formula when I go back to work, no longer have that option. So they're really trying to pump just to make sure their kid has all yeah. the things they need. So I'm sorry, I was just making a historic joke about the goat. Um, <laughs> well, there is actually like goat milk formula for certain babies. Mm. So I took, sorry, I, I took, no, I took my brain. <laughs> it's okay. So. That's good to know that, like, yeah, that formula shortage. Yeah. You don't think about it until it's gone. <laughs> no. No. But yeah, so that's all the questions I can think of. Okay. Like, yeah. Okay. Um, I think we're the only two on here. So. We are. Okay. Um. Yeah. If you think of anything else, feel free either to type the question in or message me or whatever as you I'm pretty much once you've had two c-sections there's nothing left hidden so <laughs> pretty much open to all questions <laughs> at this point. Um, but yeah I think that it's great that you're taking an interest in sewing for expectant moms or um moms who are breastfeeding I think that there's um a huge lack of that um lack of people taking interest in styling for them. Um, I, it's better now looking at the maternity clothes selection, but even modern designers aren't really thinking about the expecting mom or the breastfeeding mom. So it's great that you're taking um, an interest in that as a sewer. Yeah, it's just, yeah, it's like, what styles are the best? Because mm -hmm. if I do it, I need to still make it like generalized. Yeah. Because, you know, 
stuff to generalize the body shape if, unless I'm sewing for a commission. So I'm just taking what I can learn and mm -hmm. figuring out what I can apply to at least add something helpful. <laughs> yeah. In general, um, side lace curdles are very good because that they you only have to yeah. lace tight to here and then you can kind of adjust them however you want. So in general, the mom can adjust that however she wants. That's a good option for a generalization. A loose over gown with like different belt options to be added, like almost like an add-on, mm -hmm. um, that would probably be a good option um, if you're looking to like sell that type of thing. So those are like good options to add to. Um, yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, I've done um, what I call the courtesan one, which is lace up front. It had pants, by the way. So that was fun. <laughs> um, I've done a couple of the Florentine styles for customers. And like, I can see how those would be a little more helpful and how adding the pads to them yeah. would be not easy, but simple, well, you know, somewhere yeah. between simple and hard. <laughs> not in that sector. Doable. <laughs> Doable. There we go. <laughs> That's a good word. Yeah. V-necks in general there. tend to be very flattering on both breastfeeding and pregnant uh, moms. And uh, that gives them the option of putting something historical underneath or putting like, they make nursing tank tops that actually clip right here, that unclip mm. and roll down. And it has like two pieces of fat, like piece of fabric here. And then you unclip and roll it down. Um, so they would have the option of wearing something historical or something like that under a v-neck type like florentine gown um, mm. that's a good option i just thought about this one it wouldn't be for the um expecting mom <laughs> i was so much as maybe the nursing mom maybe but um there's, historically there's been some show where like the front panel has been like pinned on yes what if a gown was laced in the back to size but then it could like use hook and eyes on both sides of that instead of the pins. So I until wouldn't, a certain point. Yeah, I wouldn't use hook and eyes um, just because they get finicky to attach and mm -hmm. unattach. I would use buttons or I would use snaps. And then you decorate the snaps to make it look like jewelry has been added to the dress. Mm. Um, just because when the baby's crying, that would be the time the hook and eyes decide that they're just not having it. Well, the ones I usually use are hooked bars, but I get the point, like, yeah. I mean, like maybe that bars would be them. better, but you want to be able to, like, slide that thing open relatively quickly uh, with the baby, like, yanking at your clothes at the same time. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that baby element is always tricksy until you know the baby. I stopped wearing jewelry because they mm. grab and they pull and I didn't want them to scratch themselves or rip it off me because I mean my daughter was bottle fed and she still managed to like rip the necklace off me because she saw it while she was eating her bottle. So <laughs> it's just like things you need to think about that. That's because it was shiny and that got the instinct of shiny must have. No, no she's definitely her <laughs> daughter. <laughs> so. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Well, yeah, I'm just out of questions. I'm just kind of like looking at the dress I'm currently working okay. on and like fantasizing, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, what can I do in the future? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm going to do the YouTuber thing. If you like this video, please like and subscribe to our channel uh, for more content like this. Over here somewhere is a, a video of something else that our channel has put out, um, taught either by me or someone else who has kindly volunteered. And to subscribe easily, our channel is up here. Also, please feel free to hit the bell icon if you would like to be notified whenever we uh, upload something new. Bye.